Hey, what's up guys? So in last week's episode of 5 Minute Fridays, we talked about radar bands, uh, X-band, K-band, K-A-band, what they mean and where they come from. In this video, we're going to go into more information about not just the bands of the different radar guns, but actually even the exact frequencies that the radar guns are transmitting on and how we as drivers can use that information to benefit us. Uh, so to start off, let's talk about which frequencies radar guns actually use in the first place. Uh, well, here in the U.S., uh, the FCC allows on K-A-band radar gun manufacturers to use any frequency from from 33.4 to 36.0 gigahertz, uh, 2600 megahertz wide. However, uh, there's four radar gun manufacturers um, and they use three different kind of small frequency ranges within all of KA band that's allowed. Uh, we have MPH, which uses 33.8 plus minus 100 megahertz. We have Stalker, which uses 34.7. And then we have Decatur and Custom, which use 35.5. Again, plus minus 100 megahertz. So kind of smaller ranges within all of KA band. Uh, K band is a little bit different. Radar our guns are tuned to uh, operate at 24.125 or 24.150, again, plus minus 100 megahertz. So you have a little range as the radar gun's frequency can and will vary a little bit. Um, in Europe, they have uh, different frequencies like KU band maybe used there. Um, they also have some uh, 23.9 K-band guns, so kind of lower in frequency. Uh, some of those guns, Red Flex ones, are also in use in Arizona, but for the most part, we're looking at the low 24 gigahertz range on K-band. Now, with that said, so what? Who cares? How does that benefit us, right? Well, there's a couple cool things that we can derive from that information. For example, uh, here in Seattle, uh, the Washington State Patrol, uh, who usually monitors the highways, they have MPH guns that transmit on 33.8, uh, whereas a lot of the local city police, they use guns that transmit on 34.7 and 35.5. That can be really useful for me because if I'm on the highway and I see 33.8, that tells me there's an officer most likely up ahead or back behind. If I'm on city streets and I see 33.8, that tells me he's on the highway, and if I'm about to pull on the highway, I know he's on the highway before I even get on there. Conversely, if I'm on the highway and I see 34.7 or 35.5, that tells me that most likely it's just a cop on some surface street somewhere shooting radar and he's not necessarily ahead of me and that can be really useful information. Now radar detectors also offer the frequency display typically up to about three decimal places or so to give us the exact frequency of the radar gun. Radar detectors are not super precise spectrum analyzers or anything you know um, and the frequency may even vary a little bit it will fluctuate as it's picking up a signal and maybe from one detector to another it will vary a little bit as well. Nevertheless it can be very useful information. For example if we're picking up a 34.66 zero, let's say, and then suddenly we pick up a 34.770, that's a totally different frequency, which is coming from a new antenna, which tells us it could be an officer that just switched from his front to his rear antenna. It could be another officer up ahead. I just passed one. I was picking up one signal, one frequency signal, and then I've got a new frequency signal. That could be a new cop altogether. So it tells me there's multiple signals going on uh, in addition to a bogey counter. So that's really useful information too. Now, one of the most useful things that uh, the frequency information can tell us is we can help use it to determine the difference between a legitimate and a false alert. It's easier to do on KA band than it is on K band. Uh, let's start with KA. Remember how I mentioned that uh, radar guns only transmit on small sections of KA, not on the whole thing? Um, well, there's also sources of false alerts on KA. Uh, Cobras are one of the most notorious. And typically they will fall around 33.6, 33.7 or so. So just below where NPH guns transmit on 33.8. There can be some overlap, and it depends, but a lot of times they're down lower too. Uh, I've noticed the V1 will sometimes fall uh, up in the 34.8-ish range, so higher end 34.7. Uh, I've seen the Magnum Falls down to 35.3, uh, so just below 35.5. So, you know, basically looking at the frequencies, we can help kind of figure out whether it's a legitimate or a false alert. Again, there is some gray area with out-of-tune guns and this kind of stuff, but one of the nice benefits of KA band segmentation, a feature that we use on our radar detectors to help improve the performance, is it can also help cut out a lot of the false alerts that we would otherwise experience. Now on K-Band, again, this is a little bit tougher, and the reason this is the case, it's for two reasons. Number one, uh, K-A-Band legitimate and false alert frequencies really, really overlap. And so you can't really do the same tricks with segmentation the way you could do on K-A-Band. Additionally, there's just more false alerts on K-Band, as you guys have probably noticed, than there are on K-A-Band. And so we've got more noise and they overlap a lot more. Nevertheless, there are some cool things that we can use to tell the difference. For example, a Honda and Acura BSMs are usually around 24.198, 24.200, kind of that range. So if you see that frequency, 
Chances are, just take a look and see if there's a Honda up ahead of you. A police officer could be transmitting in that range too, so it's not a foolproof solution, but it is kind of a, a cool thing to look for and just kind of like the initial reaction that you'll get. Conversely, GM vehicles a lot of times will transmit maybe around 24.06-ish, kind of that range. You'll also see situations where a car may have not just one, but two blind spot sensors for either side of the vehicle. And sometimes they may be spaced 100 megahertz apart. And so if you see something like 24.084 and 24.184, two signals, and maybe the detector is going back and forth between two signals 100 megahertz apart, that could be a car up ahead with a blind spot monitoring system with a left and right sensor, both operating simultaneously. So that can be a really cool way to tell, hmm, this looks like a potential blind spot false. So as you can see, there's a bunch of cool little tips and tricks like this. Uh, again, K-band is tougher. Uh, you could try to say, okay, what are all the frequencies on K-band where the BSMs will exist? Again, they can be all over the place, just like legitimate police radar guns. So it's not a really great solution, but there are a few tricks that you can use. And I guess just to finish this off, I'm also curious to hear from you guys, uh, what are some tricks that you guys use to, uh, you know, in ways the frequency of the radar gun can actually be used to provide beneficial information to us as drivers. So let me know down in the comment area as far as what additional tricks you guys have. Other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, and I will see you guys in next week's episode of 5 Minute Fridays. Take care.